back to Kick Ons with Cam and Clark, episode 15. It was Kick Ons with Cam and uh, Lockie last week, but we finally got Huey back. Um, thanks very much, mate, for coming back. How are you feeling? What's going on? How was oh. it going? You know, how was it watching from the stands and not being out there? Oh, it's but- not much fun for what they are. <laughs> uh, I find it, I get almost more nervous sitting up in the crowd than yeah. what I do when I run out. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's a weird feeling. And uh, watching the game, I felt like we were – we sort of were always in control, but they just kept coming back and we couldn't quite finish finish them and put them away. Uh, and sitting up there, I was getting a little bit nervous. But uh, there were some funny moments when you sit up, <laughs> up top, you, you know, you see everything and – a few that stick out was probably Kenny running off with the double <laughs> hammy cramp. <laughs> and I'm sitting in the stats box and the stats box, you, you've, have you seen there before? Yeah, yeah and you're right next to the coach's, the coach's box. box yeah. And Kenny's coming off and it's a bit of a tight like, time in the game. We're probably only about three goals up and I'm just absolutely cacking myself in there with a few of the boys and then I turn around and Fags is sitting like, makes eye contact with me and I've just had to slide my chair back to behind the wall so I didn't see him. But I'm um, oh. very glad we got the job done and I'm feeling feeling very good. Good to be back. Uh, I was going to say, was it harder to, to watch the game from the crowd? Or was it hard to listen to, listen to the podcast from home when you got lucky and, oh, and Moddy on? No, it was, I did give it a listen uh, last week. It was no, it was good. Moddy, Moddy was all right. He came on and <laughs> brought a bit of energy. I reckon Lockie could, could add a bit more gusto next time, but yeah. he, he went all right. I think and he's got a bit of feedback, Lock. The highlight for me was obviously Grug's uh, video in for your yeah. 100th. That was very entertaining um, and, yeah, got a lot of messages um, you know, commenting on that, which was good. Um, I kind of touched on a little bit last week how you were feeling, but do you want to give everyone a bit of a rundown about how your week was like last week, obviously after having the concussion and, um, you know, how you're progressing now and obviously you're, you're back to your best now at the moment. But, you know, what was it like last week? It was obviously pretty scary at the game and after the game. Yeah, it's it's a bit of an odd one. You, the recovery is obviously different for, for every person that – um, gets a head knock and uh, mine probably looked quite bad, um, but thankfully the symptoms weren't too bad at all. I um, was a little bit blurry for maybe a day or two, but yeah, I've recovered really well since then. Um, it, it's it's weird. You get told, it's sort of like doing your hamstring. You've got to have a couple of days where you do nothing. So you literally get told not yeah. to concentrate on anything. So, so I've so gone home. You group chats and I reckon <laughs> there was about a hundred messages yeah, and not one replied nah, by you. Not allowed on your phone. I literally went home put on like a relaxing playlist lying on the couch <laughs> and just lie there for about four or five hours <laughs> doing nothing. Because on that mustard couch. I couldn't do on that mustard couch because <laughs> I couldn't do anything. But uh, no, nah, it's good to be back and um, got a got a couple of good little training sessions in. So nah, ready to go. It's good. We'll uh, talk about the game. Obviously, Huey just touched on it then. It was a bit – I think the, the goal-kicking accuracy, you know, probably – kept him in a little bit. We, we missed some opportunities and, um, you know, the things we probably need to tidy up on. But obviously great to get back on the winner's list and um, – you know, some really good performances. We'll talk about Jasper, who's coming on the show with us. Um, Zach Bailey was really, really good, and that midfield group really strong. So also good to see Kitty Coleman back um, and, and playing some really good footy as well. Yeah, I think Kitty and, and Moddy and Kenny, um, Connor McKenna as well, <laughs> <laughs> probably going to build a, a nice little um, partnership down there. Yeah. They, they offer us something a little bit different, all of them. Kitty's an amazing kick and, and use the ball well, mm. can intercept. Moddy, I think, is really good at getting – a hand in and just coming forward and uses the ball well and um, obviously Kenny as well with his speed and then the midfield probably after the first quarter yeah. really got on top uh, and yeah Jasper goes without saying I think that was a a real goosebump sort of moment when I he was ran on the through and bench. And <laughs> I was that upset. I was standing on the bench waiting to get on and I saw it coming. I was like, he's going to kick it. Yeah, it was but amazing. Unbelievable. So good. And we'll get him to speak about yeah. it as well. Um, he probably hasn't spoken about it enough over the last couple <laughs> of days. So. Well, I was a bit, a bit sort of hesitant to get <laughs> yeah. him on here because we thought he'd have heaps of media, but apparently we're the only ones that have got Yeah, we got, got the, this we, week, so. we got the, uh, the first pick of him, so we're going to have to <laughs> get good. everything out of him. But um, no, it was good and, and awesome to see him come in, um, play his first game, play really, really well. And um we were talking about it as well and we said that I feel like he's one of those players that'll probably rise to the yeah, occasion. He called it. And he and, it. and he did. Like he um, you know, looked very clean, very tough, um, and was just awesome to watch. Yeah. Um we'll go into St Kilda. Um interesting game this week. You know, they've they've played really well against us last year and, and they've been playing some good footy and um Friday night down in Melbourne, um we'll just touch it on before. It's gonna be pretty chilly, but um what do you what do you think we're gonna have to look for there? Yeah, they're a good good side. Uh, they've been pushing, you know, the, even the start of last year, pushing for top four, top yeah. eight um, for a year or two now. So I think they're really good defensively. 
Uh, we're going to have to be on with our ball movement and, um, yeah, they've got some dangerous plays uh, up forward and, you know, smalls, talls, a variety yeah. of different plays that can kick goals. So I think it'll be a really good match and obviously Spud's match as well, which will be um, great to be a part of. We haven't been involved in that before and mm. um, we'll speak to Chelsea Frawley soon Lovely, yep. about that. But I'm um, looking forward to, to a big primetime game Friday night again. I feel like that's all the, always the team with um, with Ross Lyon and um, obviously Lockie speaks about it a lot, um, about defence. I feel like that's the one thing that we just need to get going and um, get our offence going, sorry, on the back of that defence. And, um, yeah. you know, we touched on before with the, the goal kicking. I think that's something that we probably need to make sure we really clean up on and, yeah. um, and put some scores on. But um, as Huey just touched on then, it's it's all about mental health this week and, and showing up for your mates. And um, if you can get to Marvel, that'd be awesome for, for Spud's game. So we're planning that and... Um, we're going to have a chat to Chelsea Frawley now, which would be awesome. All right, we're joined by Chelsea Frawley, uh, the daughter of Danny. Um, this week's a, a special game for us. It's the first time that we get to play in Spud's game. Um, I know it's been happening for a few years now. Chelsea, welcome to Kick-Ons. And, and do you want to give us a bit of an insight and, and talk to us a little bit about what this game is about this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much, guys, for having me. Um, we're really excited to be playing you guys on Friday. Um, a big match on Friday, which is exciting. Uh, essentially, the game is all about... Um, this year especially, um, driving people to show up for their mates. So whether that's show up to the game, um, show up in the, your personal life by, by picking up your phone and having a conversation, um, and also raising much-needed funds for the Danny Foley Centre, which is our mental fitness facility here at Moorabbin. Awesome. Uh, it's the third time that you've you've run the game now, and I think just watching it from up in Brisbane, it's been a great success. Uh, what is all the support that um, has been thrown um, around you guys, meant to the, to you and, and your family as well? It's been absolutely amazing. We've, we're really, really proud of what we've been able to do um, with Dad's Legacy. Obviously, you know, it was quite a horrific time um, when he did pass away. So being able to hold the candle that he lit before he passed and kind of continue the work that he so bravely started has been something um, my family and I are really passionate about. And we're really, really thankful to the St Kilda Football Club uh, and the Danny Frawley Centre for all the work that they're doing in this space. Because I think, you know, mental health and mental ill health um, affects two in five people personally um, across our lifetime. But I think that that number is more far reaching when it comes to, you know, um, friends, family members. We all know someone who's been um, affected by mental ill health. So I think that this message and, and this game is super important. Um, we've seen you speak about the two in five and um, we've seen it from up here. We've seen the AFL speak about it and St Kilda. So for the people that are listening and, and um, haven't heard about that, do you want to run through that and um, explain that to everyone? Yeah, absolutely. So we know that two in five people um, – Two in five Australians experience mental ill health across their lifetime, which has actually gone up um, from one in five. Yep. So we know that personally um, we're affected, two in five people are affected. But, yeah, that number is a lot larger when you look at the, the impact that mental ill health has, has on our society from um, a community perspective. So, you know, these these games and initiatives are a start, but there's so much work to be done um, being able to drive that number down. Absolutely. And all the funds raised on Friday night will obviously go towards the Danny Frawley Centre. Um, can you talk us through what uh, that centre helps to achieve and, and where this money is going to um, help all these people that are affected by uh, mental health? Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, Dad, um, before he passed, had a conversation with um, the past CEO in Matt Finnis around creating a space for past players um, to be able to come back and connect with um, the club once they do retire because he was finding that a lot of his mates and a lot of the past players that were coming through the system were, you know, it's, it's a pretty harsh industry, AFL. Um, so they were losing a lot of their connections to, you know, a team. Yep. Um, I think that's a massive, a great part of footy. Yeah. Um, and their connections to, you know, doctors, um, physios, psychologists. So he was wanting to be able to create a space that allowed past players to come back and feel connected to the club, to the club that they kind of gave a lot of their life to. But that that seed grew into being able to create a centre for the community um, that helps to build mental fitness. So we have a fair few programs at the centre, which is where our money will go towards, around going into community sports clubs, primary schools and secondary schools, corporates, um, 
to be able to teach them skills around building mental fitness, which is a lot at the earlier intervention. There's a lot of work that's been done and a lot of conversation that has been, happened at that later intervention. Um, but we know that building mental fitness earlier on in your life um, allows you to better cope with life's ups and downs. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, it's so important, and we've also uh, got some inside word that there's going to be a curtain raiser game. Um, there might be some <laughs> some ex legends playing. Do you want to talk about that game as well? Yeah, we're really excited this year um, to be launching Spud's mini match. So that will happen at seven twenty. I've been um, bribed. I don't know. How, don't say Joe. I've heard you. I've heard you bench. put your hand up, and you want to go straight to full <laughs> forward at the start. <laughs> I might sit on the bench, but um, no, we're really excited to have. Um, a bit of a mini match at the start of the game with some really, really awesome mental health advocates in, um, you know, Dylan Buckley, Daniel Gorringe. We've got Archie Thompson, who's really vocal in this yeah. space as well. Um, and then also some St Kilda greats in, you know, Justin Kazitsky, Brendan Goddard and Joey Montagna are going to pull on the boots as well. So it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. No, that's very good to see. And um, if you are coming to the game, make sure you do get there a bit early to, to jump on and, and see that. But um, thanks so much, Chelsea, for jumping on. Um, it's a great initiative. We're looking forward to playing um, in it on Friday night. Absolutely. Um, and we'll have all our support behind it. And, and hopefully the Lions fans can come down and, and do the right thing as well. So thanks very much for joining us, Chelsea. And um, as the initiative of Spud's game, the Lions and Saints have, have paired together to do a two for one. So uh, one tick in here can bring your mate, which is an awesome initiative. So uh, please get onto that. We're going to quickly roll to our ad break. And we got the, the, the first game from last week, uh, Jasper Fletcher coming on after. So stay tuned. Hey, Lions fans. We've got some exciting news to share with you. Our official healthy hearing partner, Odira, has a limited time offer on all A01 headphones purchased before June 30. These headphones are a total game changer. Don't miss a beat during our podcast or any game day action with a sound tailored to your unique hearing profile. And the best part is, for a limited time only, you receive a free TV transceiver worth 150 bucks with any pair of A01 headphones. That means you can Bluetooth connect your headphones to TV or in-flight entertainment for your completely personalized audio. Visit audira.com before June 30 and discover the joy of personalized sound. Join the Ned's AFL Open Group to connect, bet and banter with hundreds of like-minded punters and see expert tips on every AFL game this season. Take it to the Ned's level. T's and C's apply. See website for details. What are you really gambling with? Welcome back to Kick Ons with Cam and Clug. Uh, we're joined here by Jasper, the, the debutant from last week. Uh, thanks for coming on, mate, and uh, welcome to Kick Ons. Uh, thanks for having me. <laughs> um, how'd you go, mate? How was? Tell us about it. You know, the first game. It's always an awesome feeling, and um, you had all your family there, and you know that the video footage coming out of your dad before the game, and um, yeah, that was awesome, mate. But tell us about how good that weekend was and um, the game a bit. Yeah, no, it was a pretty awesome week. Um, from Tuesday, finding out. It was a long week, and yeah. Friday was a long day. <laughs> Seven fifty game times a pretty, pretty long wait. Yeah. Um, so that day, you know, it was going so slow. But <laughs> once the game came around, I was pretty excited to get started, and and the speech that Dad gave was pretty good. And I was probably close to crying in the I end. I was really close to crying. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't think he was going to cry to be honest, because he's not normally like that. But no, nah, it was a good experience. It was good to get the win. Straight on to the big moment, the goal. <laughs> you got to you got to talk us through that. What was going through your head? I, I spoke to you a bit earlier in the week about it, and you said that you didn't know that Francis, I think it was, was coming yeah. the other way. What What did you think when you saw him? Yeah, well, yeah. So I knew Dev. I knew I was at the open space. I knew Hipwood was going to ring, uh, rip back to goal, and yeah. as, as that's why I played on so quick because I thought Francis wasn't going to be there. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then I noticed, like, oh no, I'm totally. <laughs> I thought I'm a team boy now. Came on to me and said I was going to get absolutely cold. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, and then I just saw the goals and I was like, oh, looking back at the footage, I probably should kick it at Charlie next time. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, we did that in the first anyway. game, mate. Um, it was awesome. It was awesome. What about, how did you find, you know, uh, to obviously a big step up from playing VFL and um, obviously from 18s to VFL and then VFL to AFL, you felt like, or you looked like you were pretty comfortable out there and, you know, how did you feel like the pace of the game was or did you expect it to be any different or... Yeah, it was definitely hot. Yeah, I know they bring they brought the pressure pretty early, and yeah. I think my first thirty seconds on the field I got absolutely smashed. So <laughs> that was probably a good thing just to get in the game early, but it definitely it moves a lot quicker, and I was blowing up pretty early. That's why I think in the first quarter I came off a little bit earlier than expected because I was blowing. I'm like, oh, I need a rest here, and you cramped as well. And you, you were saying you yeah. only played. You wouldn't have played as much game time around as far as what you do in a normal game, but you still oh, still, still my heart drop when you cramp. I didn't know what that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. Lockie came up to me and said they thought he did my knee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it looked like I did that. Um, BT was showing me after the game the footage. I'm like, oh, turn it off, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it, yeah, it's not a fun. A bit of pickle juice. I had two. <laughs> two, two salt tablets. You're running around with the big, the big yellow tongue <laughs> after. That's the worst stuff, juice. isn't it? The yeah. gherkin. Like, what is yeah, it? Yeah, like a mac gherkin. 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 Yeah. It's not great. No. I was trying to avoid it. And then and Conor McKenna actually came off and he was cramming. Yeah. He said, oh, don't give me the pickle juice. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he no. needed it more than you. He oh, had the double he legs. Groin, hamstring. Groin, hamstring. Yeah, he was sitting with straight legs on the bench, leaning back and everything. Um, we touched on your dad before, mate, but um, I'm not sure if most people know, both of your parents are both former athletes and um, it was good to see them both in there and, and sharing that moment with you. Do you want to touch on um, their pathway and, and how that's helped you be the athlete that you've become? Yeah, so mum played basketball, um, WNBL in Australia. So when I was growing up, I played basketball too. Yeah. Um, played all about 16s. I found out I was too small to play this sport. <laughs> so I was getting posted up and scored on too easily. So I'm like, oh, I'll Taking me into the up, paint. Go, go to footy, but... Um, yeah, no, it's been it's been great because they were both such hard workers and probably growing up I was a little bit lazy with my training and then <laughs> when I got to 14, um, that's when they, I wanted to make the AFL and mum and dad started pushing me. So, um, no, nah, they've been a, such great help and even now just giving me those little little tips yeah. um, how to lead up into a game and that sort of thing and take on the pressure. So, yeah, it's good. And was your, you got coached by Fletch, your old man as well? <laughs> is is yeah. he true he dropped you or not? <laughs> yeah, so in my, in my first year at Sherwood, I played two practice matches and actually in my second one, I actually went it right. And then, <laughs> and then I remember Thursday he came up to me and said, yeah, you're playing lunchtime this week. <laughs> I was like, oh. And then they lost and so I sort of, I remember walking around home and he came up, he was pretty flat up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just looked at him like, so, you should have played me. Yeah, I said, oh, come on. Yeah, like, anyway, we had a few boys back at the senior club, so it was probably, it was probably warranted that he dropped me. So I'm uh, picturing like they're both sitting at each end of the dinner table, we're just staring yeah. at each other. <laughs> yeah, he's not good after a long time. Like, he's, he's really passionate. So I remember we used to lose, like we had some big losses. Yeah, yeah. Like 100 points. <laughs> and and for the next three days, he'd sit to himself or he'd be watching the game and you'd smack things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he does some... Did some things. Oh, That's I in the quaffle. Yeah, yeah, quaffle. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and now you're living with uh, Will and Shadow. Um, how do you, how do you find that? Because yeah, you know, when you see from the outside, Will and Shadow are very very different people. How do you find living with them? I feel like you could kind of be the the middle ground to even them both out of it. But what's it like? Yeah, it's it's definitely a good balance. Like yeah. early on, we're still getting used to each other and that sort of thing. But now, like. Yeah, Will's obviously from the outside a real quiet person, but yeah. inside like, the house, he's he's one of the loudest ones. <laughs> really? Um, and Chad's obviously good because he's he's an extravert. He's got yeah, 13, yeah. 12 siblings. So <laughs> I was going to say, he's he, probably, with people. he probably feels like he's got <laughs> no one in the yeah, house yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, no, he's probably got his own space anymore. But, um, no, he's a good fella. He's a really funny lad, and I think all the boys get involved, and, and now we're like, We've got three TVs out now where we all play Xbox on, so it gets pretty loud. I'm, I'm pretty sorry for the neighbours. Oh, oh, what are you awesome. playing? Fortnite, is it? Yeah, Fortnite, PGA. Um, the PGA game. 2 is a big one. Oh, yeah. yeah so, um, oh, You've seen you do a couple of uh, cooking classes as well. What's it like for, for dinner? Is it one person cooks for the three or everyone kind of a bit more oh, separate? We're not all – to start off with, we was going to the coast bit, so me and Shadow were doing a little bit of cooking, and then yeah. one night I, I cooked salmon – um, and it all fell apart. <laughs> and I think from that moment, Chaz, I'm not cooking with you ever again. <laughs> so I, I've gotten better um, and I found my, you know, my repertoire yeah, in, yep. in the kitchen. But um, oh, I think I think Will's mentioned the stage of starting to cook together because yeah. you just come home from training and go, oh, I don't want to cook. 100%. <laughs> and it's more the fact that like after someone cooks, you'd go in because we've got a smaller kitchen. So mm. having three people in there is pretty tough. And you know, when all the dishes are around, it doesn't help either. So... <laughs> Well, one person can cook and the others can clean up. The yeah, it's nice. So. It's nice when having two live, nights I was going to say, when yeah. you live with a couple more people, yeah. it's actually better. Like, even remember that stage when you were living with Bez? And oh. I remember you used to get so, so frustrated, frustrated about it because Huey had come to me and be like, oh, I went down to the butcher and got all this like steak <laughs> yeah. and cooked them up all this steak and Bez would just go to the butcher and buy a ready-made lasagna. <laughs> lasagna. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and then one night, we because we were, went through, during COVID, we went through a stage where everyone was playing Call of Duty. Yeah. And he's made... He did like he did this pork belly, which was good, but he couldn't be bothered peeling the potatoes for the mash, so he just made a mash like mash sweet potato with skin all through it. No. And I was like, Man. he goes, "What? The skin's the most nutritious part." <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is. Shocking. It is the best. So, and I reckon, enjoy that the most when you grow up and, and young, like when you get to the club, living with the teammates, it's so it. much fun. It's it's the best. But um, we got the quiz, Jasper, yep. um, which is it's become a big part of it. Sponsored by Ned. So, thanks very much, guys. Huey's never won one. Oh, so, so pre- on a pre- oh, pre- I don't uh, think... No, no yeah, fags, <laughs> He's beaten by fags. He's been beaten by everyone. Um, Lockie come on last week was the host. Lockie won as the host, but Huey has never, ever won one. So um, the way we play it, Jasper, is yep. your name's your buzzer. Yep. 
Oh, you get five questions. They're a bit – they're tailored to the both of you, so hopefully they uh, can even out. We'll see if you can get a win, but I'm rooting for you, Jasper. Oh, it's time. At the start of the year, we are going to say we'll get a coffee for everyone, but here we be 14 comes down now, so <laughs> we've thrown that out the window. I need a pump up from Greg, I think, before <laughs> <Yeah>. next one. <laughs> yeah, let's go! <laughs> woo! Woo, woo, woo! Uh, the first question. Adrian Fletcher played for which four AFL clubs? Jasper. <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> Frio, St Kilda, Geelong, Brisbane Bears. Yes, one bang. That's an easy one. Oh, yeah, you can get five. That's right. This one might be a little bit easier. Besides human cluggage, who's the most famous lion to warn, um, to come from Warnable? Clark, John O'Brien. There we go. Okay. How many stars are on the New Zealand flag? Clark, four. Here we go. Here he comes. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to be the only one that loses. This be the biggest moment. <laughs> Can you spell our there. teammate Shadow's first name? Jasper. S H A D E A U. Oh, here we go. That's is correct. That oh, it's 2 2. I don't know if it's a that. tough one. So, this is uh, because I played my 100th game on the weekend. Who did I play in my 50th game against? It's a team outside of Queensland, a team outside of Victoria. Plug. Ah, oh, Frio. No. I'll give you a chance. Yeah. It's not a WA either. <laughs> Jeez, that narrows it down. You pretty much. We played him a couple of weeks ago. Oh, <laughs> Adelaide. Yeah. No, I was going to say Jasper that. wins again. Oh, remember? <laughs> you, you remember? No, no, no. It's just like you said, WA. Yeah, it's not like WA, Queensland, Victoria. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, that's awesome. So there we go. Huey's down again. Oh, uh, Jasp, congratulations, mate. Well done on your first game last week. Um, you know, you made a lot of Lions fans pretty proud and pretty happy to watch. You made me proud. I had to text you after the game. I was yeah. proud of you, mate. So well done. Um, yeah. Thanks for jumping on the potty, mate. Uh, all our fans and listeners, get down to Marvel this Friday to, to cheer on us against the Kilda and, and celebrate Spud's game. Um, subscribe to the potty if you haven't yet, and uh, we'll chat to you next week. Good stuff. Awesome.